Wisconsin. The Dairy State. A political swing state with acres upon acres of farmland. There is much more to Wisconsin than meets your eye. Wisconsin is a paranormal hotspot with location upon location infested with spirits. Some friendly, others not so much. I'm Matt Braxton, and my team of paranormal investigators have traveled the state in search of the paranormal, amassing groundbreaking evidence of spirits that roam this physical realm. Our unstaged evidence couldn't be more shocking Oh god. More terrifying. It's like a black figure or something. You're more awesome than what you are about to see. Welcome to the Blood Cemetery. This place has a weird backstory. The legend of the Blood Cemetery is that a man named Kelvin Blood hung himself in a tree. His grave was then placed below that tree out of respect. Supposedly, the tree is said to bleed, and if you touch it, Blood Spirit will curse you. As cool as this legend is, the cemetery explicitly states Blood's real backstory. He was a soldier and died as an old man, a war veteran, not of suicide. But people still report strange phenomena, and that's why we were there. We're gonna start this out just by using the EMF detector. Basically what this is, is it picks up energy which spirits are said to give off. So let's just go see if this lights up at all. Now since this is private property, we can't cross this fence here, but we can get pretty darn close to it. Are there any spirits here with us? If there are, can you come up and light this up for me, please? All you have to do is stand next to it. heard a lot of stories about you. If you're here, can you give us a sign? We tried the EMF detector for a good while, not receiving any evidence. You want to try and take some pictures? Okay. This next piece of equipment is just a normal everyday camera, and this is going to hopefully show us some spirits. Spirits often show up on camera as orbs. Pictures taken during this daytime portion proved unsuccessful, so we decided to head to the second location. So, uh, we're gonna split up tonight, actually. And Matthias is gonna show you guys around the next location. So this next spot that we are right here is supposedly haunted by a troop of Boy Scouts. Now the story varies a lot as most stories do and we see that in everywhere we go. But this one is interesting because it's either their troop leader murdered all these Boy Scouts or their bus driver murdered them all. Another story is that a kid dropped a lantern and killed everyone in a fire. There is another part of the story that this happened between the 1950s and the 1960s. Now that's a large span of time, and the fact of the matter is, if a bunch of Boy Scout troops were murdered, wouldn't that be a bigger deal? Wouldn't that be a solider date? 
Boy Scout Lane's multiple inconsistencies made it seem very unfactual and unbelievable. However, we still wanted to check for any chance that the land did house something paranormal. So we began the daytime portion of the Boy Scout Lane investigation. So down here is where they think that the accident happened because this whole area here is private property. As you can tell by the smile you're on camera side. So I think this is a, this is a, another really good spot that we're gonna have to check out. This is a audio recorder. So whenever we play this, we can, he well for one, we'll hear each other's talks. When we do it, we have to be quiet. Or if we're gonna make noise, you have to say you're making the noise. But you can also hear ghosts and other things speak through this, supposedly. It's weird that there's so many like rocks and things. Like I feel like they probably were trying to build a camp here. They did purchase this to build a campsite on, so. Or potentially it's um because farmers, there's a lot of farmland around here. Farmers will like dig up rocks obviously from you know, tending the land and they'll yeah. throw them here. Yeah, I wonder maybe. I wonder how far they got building the actual campground because they were like that was their plan, they just never did. So I wonder actually a lot of houses i can see one red house right through yeah, there i wonder one white and then there was obviously the one over there i just wonder how far they got though so i guess we'll just try to do a quick record ghost if you want to communicate with us now is a good time did anything happen here okay matthias listened back in the recording capturing no evps i think this is most likely to me though this is the most interesting location simply because the story behind it, the fact that it's all now private property and how many houses there are around here, even though we're like, we're in the middle of nowhere, but there's like so many houses. So we'll come back here then later tonight. As the nighttime loomed over our two locations, we geared up and then split up. All right, so I'm just pulling up to the cemetery. I'm all by myself. Uh, it looks very creepy, I can tell you that for free. Oh my goodness. I guess anywhere in the dark's freaky, but... Yeah, so Matthias and Taylor at the other location. I'm gonna grab the night vision camera and the equipment that I have, and... Let's see what the deal here is. Um, yeah, it's definitely gonna be freaky here all by myself. Well, the lights are telling me to get out, so... <laughs> Here I go. Are you getting that? Yeah. Look at that. We just started recording and it's like, it's been spiking up a little bit. Yeah, it's, oh, it just stopped. Right as Taylor began filming, the EMF detector began to spike. Matthias is convinced that it was not his phone setting it off. The EMF yeah. detector is getting nothing. There must have been something by us when we were standing there. We were just standing there talking, like we were like going over the plan, <laughs> over what we we're gonna do, and then it just it just went off. Okay, so I have the night vision. God, we just got here, guys. Can you give me a little breather, breathing room? I'm like afraid to shut the car door to turn off the lights. Right. Oh, I caught something. Oh, I got something in that one. Okay, it was right above the grave. Weird. Not saying that these orbs are 100% paranormal, as they could be moisture or dust. However, it is eerie to see them hovering over the grave. Well, I think I got... <sighs> that might have easily been moisture, so you can't be too sure, but... I didn't see any in the air that time. You can always see it in the air, like when you... around the pictures. Alright, I think I'm done with taking these because it's too moist out like the air is just not good for uh, ghost hunting well i'm not seeing anything I don't yeah i don't anything think it's doing around. anything it definitely was going on over there not receiving any more emf spikes matthias decides to turn on the spirit box 
So the spirit box. Essentially, this is a radio that switches really quickly between frequencies and supposedly spirits can talk through it. We've gotten great evidence with it in the past. Is there anyone who would like to communicate with us? That was like, did you hear that? Yeah. Is that like a... Yeah. This popping noise, we have never heard from this device before. It isn't exactly paranormal, but it isn't normal. You guys saw Matthias use this before at Boy Scout Lane, um, so I'm gonna try using the EVP recorder to see if I can get Nico's voices here. Hello? That sounded like footsteps. Just then I captured the sound of footsteps, which I assumed was a deer or other animal. If this was an indoor location, this would have been fantastic evidence due to the perfect audio quality. However, the fact that it was outdoors and most likely a deer debunks this instance entirely. That sounded like footsteps. It could easily be an animal, because there were a ton of them. If there's a spirit here, can you talk into this device? Do you have a message that you'd like to get through? Okay, that was like really close to me. Yeah, there's so many animals here. They're freaking me out, dude. All right. Okay, recording starting. I listened back to the audio recorder, not capturing any voices. So we're not, we're getting these little bits. We're getting these little bits, like right there. Yeah. Just then, Matthias and Taylor capture two voices. Can you make out what they're saying? So we're not, we're getting these little bits. We're getting these little bits, like right there. Yeah. We're getting these little bits, like right there. Yeah. Okay, so I'm adjusting the tripod and I think I just saw something behind a grave, but it, it might have just been like my eye. My eyes are just starting to adjust, but it looked like something black just went in front of the grave. You can't see it in the camera at all, that was sick. I hope, I hope that was just like my eyes messing with me. Um, if there's a spirit here, can you make an X? After seeing something black pass in front of a grave, which again could very well have been an animal, I tried a dowsing rod session. Well, the dowsing rods that I have are 100% copper. Um, you hold onto the handles and the rods themselves you don't touch. Um, and as you're holding them, they tend to point where the energy is. So if you ask a question, you will feel the energy flow. It's really hard to describe. Is there a spirit here? Please make an X if there is. After a good 20 minutes, I received no communication. If we see another car, like we're dipping. Like I, I <laughs> you give off a very creepy vibe. Like, mm -hmm. like you are not welcome here. You need to leave. <laughs> As Matthias jokes about how many times people living in the area bothered him and Taylor about filming there, he captures some communication. As he speaks, there is a male voice exclaiming something that we can't quite make out. Not welcome here. Not welcome here. There is also a female or child's voice clearly saying stop it. <laughs> Were they saying stop the spirit box or stop criticizing the residents? I don't think I caught anything. Um, so I didn't catch anything with the dowsing rods. I got like some orbs on the camera, but I don't know if they were just moisture or dust. I'm gonna walk over here with the EMF meter to see if maybe they can show themselves this, this way. This is the last time I'm gonna bother you, all right? If you can, can you please come over here, make this thing light up? All you have to do is walk by it and it should light up. Can you make this move at all, please? I received absolutely nothing. If there were, in fact, spirits, they did not want to talk. Why are the people here so protective? <laughs> Matthias continues to capture a male voice. Could this be the spirit of a troop leader or something entirely different? I say we wait up. Whoa. I say we wait up. Whoa. Do you have it? Ooh, okay. Do you have any messages for us? Do you have it? Do you have, ooh, okay. Do you have any messages for us? 
Hopefully your camera can pick up the audio well enough. Audio well enough. I will not deny the creep factor. It was very creepy. <clears throat> So just from my short time being here, I know it wasn't very long, but I did not feel anything weird. I know I was definitely like freaking out, but that's just because it's dark cemetery and there are animals moving all around me. So it's like, whew. but yeah, I don't think we got anything here. Um, let's go see what Matthias and Taylor are up to. Hopefully they're getting some action because I'm not. <laughs> So, all right, let's head to Boy Scout Lane. Okay, I'm sure we got something. As I approached Matthias and Taylor, they told me about the communication they had, so I decided to try a dowsing rod session. If there's a spirit here, can you please make an X? Not receiving any communication again, I hand the rods to Taylor to see if a woman's touch could help. Indeed, the rods began to move for her, so we asked some hard-hitting questions. Did your troop leader kill you? Yes or no? X means yes. Um, all the way apart means no. It kind of looks like they're spreading right now, but it's like one. It only is okay. like only we've written like only one half. It's like oh, one. I feel them being pulled. Which way? Apart. Oh yeah, they're being pulled apart. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I can't see them. Oh my God! Here. This left one. The left one's it, like hitting It right? touched. And the right, the right one's apart, so like they okay, are... So I nobody, can, yeah. Nobody killed you. The spirit, assuming there was no human error, informed us that the legend's troop leader had nothing to do with the spirit's death. Was there a fire here? Oh my god. Yeah, there. Oh, wow. oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> the spirit then stated, again assuming there was no human error, that there was, in fact, no fire on the land. Can you guys bring it back to the okay. center? Oh, that one oh my god. Alright, keep I'm, going. I'm shaking. <laughs> Thank you. Are you a good spirit? Yes or no? They look like they're just stuck. Yeah, they are literally stuck still. Oh, oh. So you're not a good spirit? Yeah, that's what Oh we're my doing. god. Are you a bad spirit? Cross them for yes. Nah, oh, they no. just hit. Could the energy have simply meant that it didn't have any ill intent? Not particularly good, but not bad. It was just there to communicate. Can you make an X if you're the one who killed the Boy Scout? <laughs> what the f was that? Oh my god. That was, was that an animal? That was definitely an animal. I feel like a deer just ran into my f***ing car. Just then, a noise startles us all. The Boy Scout. <gasps> what the f That was scary. That sounded like... I don't know, like a branch falling or something? Like it was thick. Yeah. We couldn't see an animal near us, but it most likely was one. I don't know if you guys caught anything here. We're obviously gonna have to look back, but I didn't get anything at the cemetery, so. We might have got something here, but we'll have yeah. to look back at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's right. definitely something on those dowsing rods. Okay, cutting. After a night of investigating and evidence review, our conclusion on the two Stevens Point locations was solid. The Blood Cemetery, our first location, had virtually no sign of paranormal activity. Yes, I captured orbs on the digital camera and footsteps on the infrared camera's audio. So I have the night vision. However, these two instances can easily be debunked. The orbs could very well be dust or moisture, and the footsteps were most likely a deer or other animal, as very similar noises occurred all throughout the night. Boy Scout Lane, on the other hand, had some compelling evidence. Many spirit box voices were captured, many unable to be determined, but clear voices nonetheless. So we're, not, we're getting these little bits. We're getting these little bits, like right there. Yeah. We also had a short interaction with the dowsing rods. Oh, oh. So you're not a good spirit? Yeah, that's what Oh we're my doing. god. And Matthias captured some spikes on the EMF detector, which strangely did not occur during the day. Was the story of the Boy Scouts being murdered true? Did your troop leader kill you? Okay, so I nobody, can, yeah. Nobody killed you. According to the rods, no. However, we did come into contact with some form of energy on the location. So you're not a good spirit? Yeah, that's what Oh we're my doing. god. 
Are you a bad spirit? Cross them for yes. Nah, oh, they no. just hit. What it was remains unknown. Our next location on our trip around Wisconsin was only a short drive away, and it was a place very familiar to us. The Cottage Cafe in Plover was featured in an episode of our show and gave us some startling evidence. One's east and one's west. Oh my god, you can feel it. There. Where's Anne? I don't even see him. Bingo. Do you have a horse? Where is he? <laughs> it left. It left. The home was built in the 1850s, then converted into a hotel and later a restaurant. Lisa Bishop and her fellow investigators purchased the building to open as the Cottage Cafe to invite people to experience the many paranormal occurrences, such as breaking glasses, full-bodied apparitions, and disembodied voices, to name a few. Lisa and company invited us back to investigate the basement of the building, a place we were not originally allowed to shoot our episode. That room is the freakiest. It's cinder block, but this is the this is where all the gla all the, the glasses and everything was stored. But this is mm. it's all sealed off from the rest of the house. So someone thought maybe the coal or oil or whatever was that heated the house was here because that way you wouldn't get any of the soot in the rest of the house. Lisa believes that there's a spirit of a slave who was forced to live in the coal room. That's a fatal mirror. Yeah, we were told by a psychic, they said there's a spirit in that mirror that watches them, and I'm like, I don't like that mirror too much. So there was these four psychics, they were sitting upstairs by that buffet area. Yeah. They're getting everything ready and talking about, you know, what day, what time, and everything it should be. And I come in there and they're like, boy, that, that old lady's a bitch. <laughs> I said, excuse me? I said, who? And they said, oh, she was sitting on a chair over there where that built-in uh, cabinet is in there. She was sitting at a, on a chair next to that. And I'm like, I didn't see her. She was one of the spirits. I said, oh, okay. I said, well, where'd she come from? She said, the mirror in the basement. And I'm like, oh. But she, anyway, she was giving them crap and telling them to shut up because they were joking around and laughing because when they get together, they do a lot of laughing. And she was telling them to shut up. And she was being really nasty to them. With that newfound knowledge of the basement and the mirror, it was time to shut out the lights and start communicating. Okay, we're rolling on the recorder. Mm -hmm. Is there somebody in this mirror? Do you like to... To bitch at people who are having a good time? Can you come out of the mirror? What's your name? Can you come put your hand on this meter? Come touch it. Alright, I'm gonna pause on this. We listened back to the recording, receiving no communication. As I start the spirit box, a male voice comes through saying, you again? Is he referring to our previous investigation at the cafe? Come talk to me. Is that you? Is that you? What's your name? No response. Yet. Are there any spirits in the spooky basement? Are there any spirits in the spooky basement? Do you live inside the mirror? Or are you just attached to it? What are you? What are you? This voice seems to be the female spirit answering my first question, stating that she is in the mirror. 
Not receiving any more communication, I shut the spirit box off and we begin another method of investigating. The Necrophonic app, which can be downloaded from any app store, is a paranormal research app which releases fragments of pre-recorded words in hopes that spirits can somehow form phrases from them. Yes, it sounds like a hoax. However, we have received very chilling evidence using it in the past. What was that? I don't know. What's the name of the lady in the mirror? What's the name of the lady in the mirror? Uh, I feel like my energy is really drained. <laughs> Ugh. Feeling like my energy was heavily drained, literally forcing me to lean on a beam and then take a seat. I held the EMF meter up to the mirror to see if it had anything to do with my sudden loss of energy. Watch what happened. Whoa, look at that, look at that. Whoa, look at that, look at that. Whoa, look at that, look at that. Wow, oh my god. Can you hold it on the red for us? Can you feel it? I got my hairs on my I just saw something move over there too. Jeez, I feel like something's touching my hair. Yeah, there's nothing over here that would give off. Yeah, I feel it. All over. There was absolutely no explanation for the spike. Even further proving it to be paranormal, I scanned the entire mirror with the detector again and there wasn't a single spike. This means nothing near the mirror caused that to happen, making it 100% unexplained. Are you feeling anything touching you? My hair before. Yeah, my side. Are you getting it? Yes. Just then, Lisa claims to feel something touch her, but listen to this voice come through the app say her exact words just before she says it. Are you feeling anything? Are you feeling anything? Very strange. What's my name? It said, it said your name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's my name? String those little bits together and say whole words, please. I did. Uh, I did. <laughs> right on cue, there's a very low chance that the app just randomly generated that perfect response. String those little bits together and say whole words, please. Uh, I did. I did. <laughs> it then again says Anne's name. Come on, don't be shy. Whoa. And don't be shy. Whoa. I just saw something behind you, too. Whoa. Oh my god. What is that? So I'm standing in the cottage basement and I see this weird, like, orb thing start to slowly come towards me. And I'm like, what in the heck is that? Like, I couldn't really get a good focus on it, but it was like glinting off of the light. It was so weird. Could have been the bug clearly shown on camera, but it looks so strange to my eyes. I personally have a hard time believing it was an insect glinting off the ultraviolet light. Not to mention, after I saw that, the vibe in the room totally shifted. Maybe the insect flying past was just a coincidence and I really did see something, but since the insect was captured, I have to assume it was my eyes playing a trick on me. Either way, it was really cool to see. I'm getting like static in my legs too. Yep. Did you just come over by us? I was sweating a minute ago. They always just run all the year. They always just run all the year. As cool as those things were to experience, what happens next is entirely shocking. Oh! oh. Something got me in the arm. Really? It was like a st ow! That's not nice. It's like because it being spiked all the way up to red when it did it, that. It was like electric shock. Okay, be nice, you guys. Yeah, be nice. I'm not trying to hurt you. In the basement of the cottage, I got seriously zapped, and I've never had that experience before. I was holding the EMF detector. We were asking questions. All of a sudden, it was just like uh, um, touching an electric fence. Something got me in the arm. Um, when I reacted to it, the EMF went all the way to the <laughs> top, and then it happened again. It was like a stow. I don't know. It was the strangest thing. Who's the pincher? What's your name? 
Just then, the spirit box voice says the same name that the necrophonic said. Agnes. Could this be the woman in the mirror? What's your name? Can you say you're sorry for pinching me or zapping me? No. 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 I can feel this energy up my arms. It's all prickly. Are you making that feeling? I'm getting zapped. I'm getting zapped. Oh, why are you zapping me? The arm that you're holding that in? Yeah. What's interesting is that every time Anne would exclaim, the EMF meter would light up. However, it would light up after she yells out, so she couldn't have possibly faked it. This is extremely compelling evidence. I'm getting zapped. I'm getting zapped. Oh, why are you zapping me? Then I noticed Taylor looked to be on the verge of tears. Taylor, what? Oh, I just saw something over there. What are you seeing, Taylor? It's like a, like a quick little, like something zipped across. What? I don't know. Are you freaking out? Yeah. I feel like I can see something over there. Turn light. Get a light. I don't have a light. I have Get the camera over there. What do you think you saw? I don't know. It was like a black figure or something. I took a sweep of the basement seeing nothing. However, Anne claimed to see exactly what Taylor did. Taylor, what? Oh, I just saw something over there. I don't know, it feels calmer now. Yeah. Whatever it is, it went that way, I think. Yeah, the pain in my shoulder is gone. We tried to gather more evidence, but whatever energy was previously in the basement was gone, and our equipment became stagnant. R. Y. A. N. Yeah. After our insane experiences in the basement, the ladies conducted an angel board session, allowing us to sit in. So when we were talking to Lisa about how the angel board came to be, um, she had mentioned that they were talking to spirit and they were asking it questions and basically it gave them the instructions how to build it. The reason being is Ouija boards are not safe. This was directed with God in mind and positive energy. Who was downstairs with us? Do you know who pinched Anne's arm? What's he up to? I don't know. <laughs> he never does this. No. Not Ryan. What's that, Ryan? R. <laughs> y. A. R. N. Is that an answer to what she asked, or? This is so this nice. Is the just way he moves. Infinity. It's this is not. Down. This isn't him. It doesn't this isn't feel Ryan. like that. No. No, it doesn't feel like him. You and I, Ryan. Lisa, Chris, and Sue have spoken to the spirit Ryan many times through the board they immediately recognized the infinity symbols as being strange. Everyone we talked to moves differently. See, yeah. Ryan, the way he goes, you can tell oh, just yeah. by the way he moves. Yeah, this is him. What's it, J? J. Mm -hmm. O. H. N. John. This is John. That's a new one. Have we met you before? No. no. I wonder it moved different. Okay. Um, See the one from the basement? Yeah. Why, why are you here? T. T H. E. M. Them. 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 As the word them comes through, Chris tears her hands from the board. Whereas I thought them meant us, as in the spirit was talking because we filmed in the basement, the ladies took it a different way. They had experienced a very negative connotation with the word them in the past. After spritzing the board with holy water and placing salt, a spiritual cleanser, onto the planchet just to be safe, the session was continued. Is it the, a good them? Okay. Oh. Okay, well that's... All right. Did you come from the basement? Why? 
E. Okay. S. Okay. I wonder if one's different. Why he's got me on. Were you the one who was bothering Anne? Mm-hmm. Okay. Why? Yes. F. U. <laughs> and <laughs> Fun. Okay. <laughs> Communication then dropped off with John. The sisters talked to another spirit they never heard of, Z, a native who lived on the land, but my mind was on something else entirely. We just learned, assuming the angel board was true, that a spirit named John inhabited the basement and was responsible for Anne's physical attack just for fun. Why are you zapping me? But something didn't add up. Through the spirit box, Agnes, the woman in the mirror, Agnes. claimed to be the cause of Anne's shocks. Who's the pincher? What's her name? So who caused the physical attack? Agnes? Or John? This is John? I used to do this for a while when I was little, but didn't know what I was doing until I got married the first time. And um, my aunt, um, so my husband at the time hooked my aunt and I up. Her name's Gail. And she is, uh, I don't know if she still is, I haven't talked to her for a while, but a member of the Twin Cities Paranormal Society group. So I was like, okay, test me out. And so it was actually, and it, it's cool, because I feel like I'm still a skeptic. So they, they worked with me, and I can astral project. Also known as an out-of-body experience, astral projecting is the process of one's soul leaving the physical body while asleep or in a meditative state. So I, that's what I've done for them. So mainly they, they did whatever, you know, whatever their group would do, but I mainly worked with them on um, houses that were for sale. So it helped for me to have an opening, I call it, like a door or a window that I could see. So, um, and then I could go there and then I would rid whatever and remove and then they could sell the house. Janelle instructed us to not tell her anything about the building or hauntings as she didn't know any of its history or ghostly inhabitants. She wanted to test herself to see if walking around she could pick up on spirits we knew were there when she didn't know. So you just want me to walk around? Wherever okay. you feel drawn Let's to. Let's try over here then. At the beginning, I grew skeptical of her abilities as nothing sounded quite right to Lisa. However, as Janelle grew more comfortable with her surroundings, as well as the lights and the cameras, she picked up something that surprised me. But then as I try to collect my thoughts, it seems like they all come together and they keep saying, move, move along. What's cool was that Janelle wasn't picking up on the spirits telling her to keep moving. She was picking up on me. So that day we had a pretty tight shooting schedule and the, I, I remember one of the one or two of the SD cards are running out of storage so I kept thinking like come on let's get going I really want to go down into the basement and see you know just if she can pick up on any energy down there so I was like come on let's you know let's get keep moving I guess and you know the fact that she was able to pick that up is just insane I knew she was picking up on me right as she said it, and that's when I began to believe in her abilities. She also spot on picked up on a recent family tragedy, which will not be included out of respect for the team member's family. Okay, let's keep moving. I feel like also, if you ask me questions, that I might be able to be more helpful. But we'll see. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I keep thinking that, keep moving. This is that we were pretty much most interested in. We then, after witnessing Janelle's abilities finally open up to the place, entered the much anticipated basement. So we all had a very interesting experience down here. So if you just want to sense what you sense, okay. and maybe if we like say something that happened to us, you're able to be like, oh, this person did this mm -hmm. or, you know. Right now I feel like my legs are weak. Uh, or trembling, but anyway. Um, the yeah. front 10 feet 
or something like that is a crawl space all the way across the front of the building. And you went through there, or you went I had to cross up on a ladder. Okay. Are you I don't know, have you guys, has anybody else felt this, you said you didn't, but this, yeah, definitely this um, weak feeling. I don't know if maybe if we shut the lights off, if you could get a better yeah. connection with it, but I'd yeah. like to know her name. Okay, For, through the mirror? Yeah. Okay. Immediately, I think of Aggie. Um, or Agnes. Um, no. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> you got it. That's the yes. name that he got. So we have the spirit box that makes like oh. white noise and supposedly they can talk through it, and that was the name that came through. Oh, geez. Okay, well then she <laughs> came cool. through. Yes. Awesome. Right off the bat, Janelle unknowingly says the name we captured not once but twice during our investigation. Agnes? Getting the same name three times is solid evidence that Agnes is the name of the spirit in the mirror. Surprisingly though, so this Aggie, or Agnes, doesn't like to be in the dark though. Mm -hmm. She'd probably rather be upstairs. So you, you had that, right, where you started crying? Yeah. That literally happened to me over here a couple seconds ago, I told Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that you start crying or te tearing up or? Yeah, here. Oh. And you went through there or you went through there? I cross up on a leg. Yeah, I haven't been over here. So like it just happened when you were talking about the wall? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Ah. We then tried to contact John, the name of the spirit that came through the angel board claiming to have shocked Anne for fun. We, when we asked intention, it just said fun. I think the fun was, I think more... He thought it was funny. Yeah. But I, I don't get the vibe. Well, I mean, not to correct you. I just, no. I think it was more of, he did it to scold you, but it was funny. He liked the response. Yeah, because I really don't feel like, like he's definitely not here yeah. right now. After being so spot on with Agnes, we were surprised to find her having trouble contacting John. I don't get any more John. I can't pull him. Uh, for some reason, and maybe it's, I have no idea. This is very interesting. We thank Janelle for her time, Lisa and company for allowing us to investigate their building again, and then begin our long drive to the next location. Well guys, this is it. We are at the Elk Mound Tower. We stared up at the crumbling tower getting a feel of what to expect come nightfall. The Elk Mound Tower was built in 1937 and was dedicated to the rural letter carriers of Dunn County. Deemed unsafe in 1987, the park around the tower was closed down for about six years and underwent heavy renovation. Following the reopening, there have been many reports about paranormal activity, which is why we were there. This place is very creepy. Now one of the stories is that underneath the tower, there's a dragon. Yes, a dragon. Urban legends about the castle believe a dragon is buried underneath it. But on a much darker note, there's a spirit that's said to have pushed a lady down the stairs. And if that's true, this might be a dangerous investigation. This is the highest point in Elk Mound. Another one of the stories is someone jumped off of this to commit suicide. However, there's no proof that that ever happened. It doesn't look like it could kill you. You'd break your legs for sure, but like, 
the spirit of the man who was said to have killed himself reportedly haunts the tower and surrounding woods. Oh, is this limestone? Probably. That's supposed to be a superconductor for spirit energy. So that might explain why a spirit is strong enough to push somebody down the stairs if that story is true. So you can take the EMF meter, just walk around the whole place and just see if it, any natural spikes occur and if any unnatural spikes occur. After sending Matthias off with the EMF detector to test the environment, I decided to try out the radar app. Alright, let's see what we get. This app can supposedly detect spirits and can give words based on environmental readings. Um, we have low confidence in the app, but it has given us some pretty cool evidence in the past. Anomalies? No sh Oh my god! Are there any spirits with us here today? Use your energy and make a word pop up on here. Still images up Belt. here. What is it, sir? Bell? Belt. 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 Okay. <laughs> Belt. Like I said, we have low confidence in the app. Well, I guess we'll just walk around the premises. Pleasant. Pleasant. Hmm. Cross. Here might be of something we're not sure. It might be in honor of someone, but there's no name. Richard. Huh? Richard? That's my husband's name. Bring? Bring? Bring Richard? Who's Richard? Feed. Bring Richard feed. Can you say yes or no? Is Richard a spirit? Huh. Caught. Caught. Richard wants something to feed off of and he was caught. Do you need batteries, like energy? You can have these. Drain them and then prove to us that you're here tonight, okay? Richard or whoever we're communicating with, we're gonna return tonight and hopefully you have enough energy to communicate with us more. But thanks for speaking with us right now. So we're right at the entrance. It's getting to be dark out. Uh, let's go start the nighttime portion of our investigation and see just what the heck's going on at this place. Okay, um, let's just start using the dowsing rods. Just attempt to see what's here, if there's a dragon. <laughs> I'm really hoping it's smog, man. Like, I yeah. love The Hobbit, I love Lord of the Rings. I want smog, man. <laughs> X is spirit. Right is yes, left is no, and out is goodbye. Do we have any spirits here with us today? Don't be shy. That flag. Yeah, I, I mean, oh, there's an X. Yeah, we got an X. Okay, thank you. Is there really a dragon buried here? Come on, yes. Come on, yes. It's sort of wavering both ways. No. No! <laughs> thank you. It's really building up the suspense. Uh, why do I come? No I, I want to ask one more question. Yeah. Are there any Sasquatch in this forest? Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> oh my I god. I did not make that happen either. Wow. All right, hey, so. I believe in them. <laughs> that That's freaking me out. Are you still here with us? Yes. Yes, okay. Ooh, I felt that. Is there multiple spirits here? Yes or no? Oh. Yes. yes. The fact that this one's not moving is a little off. Putting. Yeah, I don't know why that's like... Are there more than three spirits here? Yeah. 
Yes. Okay. Well, that's weird how it went right back. Are there any malicious or bad spirits here? Any evil spirits here at the tower? The spirit would not answer the question. Give him a shake. Okay. Make an X if you're still with us. Weird, it seemed like when we were asking questions, if it was bad, it like stopped. Yeah, it didn't want to answer. Did one of you push a woman down the stairs? Another question not answered. It's just doing nothing. I think the spirit mm. left, maybe. Maybe. Maybe in different locations. Maybe it'd be better when I was on the ground, I guess. Should I do it like over here, maybe? I feel like. It, okay. There we go. Okay, thank you. Can you point to Matthew? to you. For some reason my right hand is not working. It's the left hand is doing all the work. Thank you. <laughs> what was cool about that interaction was that I heard scuffling come from inside the building. So I stepped in to see if someone was in there, then watched the rods begin to follow my movement. Astounding. Pointed at you. <laughs> Pointing to you. Then Anne asked the big question one more time. Are there any bad spirits here? Yeah. Did one of them push someone down the stairs? Did they push someone down the stairs, the evil spirits? Yeah. Yes, okay, thank you. Are we going to be safe up there tonight? I heard another noise in there. Will we be safe in the tower tonight? No. No. Mm. Safe rolling? Okay, let's do this. I just saw something float through, like, it lit up the lens, but I didn't see it in real life. But it wasn't like a picture, it like floated through, I watched it happen. I just saw something fly by my camera. That's what I just had happen. It's like a little light. You can see it, yep, you can see it through the lens, but not... Ooh, this is pretty. Yeah, it's even cooler at night. Here's the UV cam. So we're gonna go downstairs and try a little, a little spirit box and see what we get. Okay, well, we could do the next Why did my light just shut off? I didn't shut it off. That's weird. Is there a spirit here that wants to speak to us tonight? Oh, it's Blair, give me a second. Can you give us just a message? What? 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 Can you say our name? Sound like Anne. Yeah. Sound like Anne. Yeah. How many spirits are here with us? I just saw like a light over there. How many spirits are here with us? I just saw like a light over there. Go home. Go home. How many spirits are here with us? 
How many spirits are here with us? Is there danger in the building? Yes. Is there danger in the building? Yes. Have you been pushing people down the stairs? This voice gave us a name, Gary. Could Gary be the suicide victim or one of the mailmen the site was dedicated to? If so, why would this spirit attempt to push a woman down the stairs? The slower the speed, the more clear it says Mark the Devil. Is this spirit trying to give us a message? It lasts for so many sweeps that there is zero chance that the spirit box was picking up radio signals. Is there really a dragon buried under here? No. <laughs> it's that one. Thank you. This is strange. We were getting consistent communication through the spirit box, but when I followed the instructions and entered the building, the voices went silent. What follows next is very cool. The spirits were clearly getting fed up with the racket the spirit box was making, but because I couldn't understand the voices in person, I kept the device on full blast. Who are the spirits? Who are the spirits? Kid? A kid? A kid? Mmm, well. Still not feeling as though we got sufficient evidence, I decided to rudely provoke the spirits in hopes to receive an angry response. Now if you want to be smart, push me down these stairs. Come on! Do it! Oh god, so scared. Then as Matthias takes the camera down the flight of rickety stairs, we capture this chilling voice. Oh God. We can only hope it's joking. Oh God. I continued to try and provoke the spirits. Do it! But felt no push. I don't think we got anything. Or like voice-wise we got a lot, but like I didn't feel anything weird happened besides on the bench when I like kind of zoned out for a long time. Like when I was sitting in that spirit box, I felt like I was just in like this super serene, like it was weird, man. But like on these stairs, I didn't feel anything. So yeah, let's just go see what they got. Did you guys get anything? Yeah, we've had yeah. quite the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Don't follow us home. Don't follow us home. This has been Elk Mound Tower. Um, I'd say it's definitely haunted. It's very creepy, especially at night. Um, next location. I'd say this trip's definitely worth it. Welcome to the Walker House. It 
See, this building is old and it looks to be made out of limestone, which is actually a paranormal conductor, basically. And this massive building is pretty much all to ourselves. So we are going to go inside, do the daytime portion of our investigation, then head to Graceland Cemetery and do that investigation. We usually leave after a couple hours, but we're gonna be here all night. Is Taylor scared? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Here we go. Irishman William Walker built the Walker House Hotel in 1860, adding onto a tavern and a boarding house previously built on the property. However, after multiple additions, vacancies, and renovations, rumors of hauntings began to surface. The first spirit typically seen in the pub area is of an 1800s miner. The second spirit, much more active, is of a man named William Caffey. Caffey was reportedly hung in the nearby gallows, charged with shooting another man after previously being known as the town menace. The hanging was botched though, rendering Caffey's body headless. His spirit is now reportedly seen inside the Walker house trying to scare the living for a laugh with or without his head. The new owners declined an interview, but they did tell us off camera that they had never witnessed anything paranormal happen in the building. Um, they did say, however, that they'd be open to hearing anything that we might capture, so we, we got right to work. We started with a dowsing rod session, hoping to communicate with whatever energy might have been present. Alright, is there a spirit here? Please make an X with the rods. That was me moving that. Please make an X if you're here. We tried to garner any sort of response, but got nothing. I wonder, maybe we... Try to take pictures, maybe the EMF meter. I don't think we can take pictures in here, dude. It's so dusty. All right, this thing was kind of spiking up, so I don't know if it's just because of electrical stuff somewhere. Just then, I was scanning the room for EMFs because Taylor just had captured the meter going off unexplainably as I helped Matthias with camera troubles. Keep in mind, nothing we were doing with the powered off camera would cause the spikes. Plus, we were out of the meter's range. Here's the clip that Taylor captured. Bring it down, I don't know. Is this insufficient power source? Let's get the battery down, I don't know. Is this insufficient power source? Let's get the battery. We walked around trying to explain the spikes as well as maybe capture more, both unsuccessful. <laughs> These walls are exposed original rock, so um, supposedly this can harbor more energy. Do you want to try the rod too? Yeah. There's a spirit here. Can you please make this light up? Oh, <laughs> did you see that? There's a spirit here. Can you please make this light up? Oh, <laughs> did you see that? Oh. There's no electricity on this wall, is there on the other I side? I don't think so. There was a lamp, but nowhere near where the spike happened. Not to mention the meter would have kept lit if it was an electronic inside the wall. That light up was just unexplainable. Oh, they're trying to go together. It's trying. I feel the pull. Yeah, okay. Did you make this light up before? Did you move that? No, I don't think I did. It's pulling really hard. Oh, I just felt <laughs> like a... Did you feel like that? Like a wave through my fingers, yeah. I can feel it, it's trying to pull. If there's still spirit here with us, cross the rods, please. I'm not feeling anything right now. It's just like it just passed through. It just went through and it was done. Interesting. Now that we have established that there's, something. I don't know, something weird, like maybe it was just passing energy or something, but 
You know, let's go to the Graceland Cemetery, do the daytime portion of that, and then we'll come back here and uh, spend the night. We're at the Graceland Cemetery. Graceland Cemetery, located only a few blocks away from the Walker House, is arguably even more well known in the Mineral Point community. This is because of the legend of the Graceland Cemetery Vampire. So this place is supposedly haunted by a vampire. And like we know, this is kind of dumb. Just in case there are any spirits or anything here, we want to be able to detect that as well as, hey, maybe we'll find a vampire, who knows. In 1981, police officer John Pepper was called to the cemetery when a vampire-like man was reported. When spotted, Pepper chased the vampire through the cemetery, only for the vampire to easily hop a fence and get away. There have been two more similar sightings since then, meaning the Graceland vampire could still be around. So Anne has her dowsing rods. I have the EMF detector. By now you guys know the drill, so let's get to work. We walked throughout the cemetery for quite some time, not receiving any spikes until... Oh. Wait, get, 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 get. Oh, I missed it, I think. It was flashing a little bit. Oh, okay. Come here. It's like completely to the three. Yeah, I can't explain that myself. Do you want to maybe try the dowsing rod and see if we can get anything? Right here? Yeah. Is there a spirit here that would like to speak to us? After multiple questions with no responses, Anne hands me the rods. Almost immediately, a reaction occurs. Right is yes, left is no. Mine has that magnetism. I know, you can feel it, it's very strong. We got it, we got it, look at that, look at that. Oh yeah. They're like being oh. pulled across each other too. Mine just did it too. Thank you so much. <laughs> What's interesting is that the wind's blowing this way, but this rod kept going this way, <laughs> like against the wind, so that was really cool. Are you female? Yes or no? See that? Look at that. Do you want to speak to us? What we just captured is phenomenal evidence. As the rods moved, indicating a presence, the EMF meter lit up, detecting the spirit that was moving them. Look at that. Spirits supposedly are made of energy, which is why they give off EMFs and are able to light up our meters. The fact that multiple pieces of evidence were gathered at the same time is astounding. So this is the fence the vampire supposedly jumped over to escape. Which, now that you see it, it doesn't look extremely hard to jump over, but... All right, I was actually interested to see that we got some stuff over there, but um, we are going to uh, do some more experiments here tonight. Uh, stuff that we haven't done throughout the rest of the documentary. Hopefully we get even more stuff and I'm excited to come back. So we are at the Walker house at night. So right now we're completely in the dark, aside from the light on in that room, but we are going to shut it off when we try the spirit box. But right now let's just see what we can get. You got anything in there? Mm-hmm. It's not in the other picture, so. And I took it. What's weird about this orb is not only the bluish color, which could mean a calming spirit, but the fact that it isn't a perfect circle. However, there was so much dust captured on our night vision cameras that we cannot conclude this strange orb as entirely paranormal. Are there any spirits down here that would like to communicate? Don't be shy. I'm not getting anything. Like, I don't even feel a pull. Is there a spirit here? Can you please make an X? I hear that there's a miner. Spirit of a miner in here, is that true? Can you 
you please make an X if you're here? Huh. Yeah, I don't feel anything. We then turned on the spirit box. This room should be pretty, like, radio frequency safe, you know? Are there any spirits with us? We can hear your voice through this. If you want to come and talk with us. We captured no voices. Yeah, man, there's like absolutely nothing. <laughs> okay, so we are in the Walker house still and we are going to try out the angel board. Now this board was created originally by Lisa and Chris from the cottage. So we took a picture of Chris and Lisa's angel board and um, duplicated the design, um, put our own little twist on it. Um, basically because we were in a hotel where we didn't want to be bringing in negative spirits or evil entities and using a Ouija board was not going to happen. So we decided to bring the angel board along to get some positive results. Let's uh, give it a go, yeah. How many fingers? Two. Are there any spirits with us here? I know. I'm back too far <laughs> all the way over here. <laughs> Is there anyone here? We continued to try and use the board, but received absolutely no communication. So we are just about to head to the Graceland Cemetery, but while we are there, we are going to run the speaker with this, this is actually a new piece of equipment we got. It's a diode. So this is what they used in old TVs and old radios to pick up signal. So hopefully the spirits can tune their voice somehow into the frequency of this diode and we will hear it through the speaker. And we have a camera set up right here and it's going to shoot that bear. And that bear is, um, it has a motion detector when it's completely dark and there's motion, these things will light up. See? So since this bear is going to be lighting up, this detector will pick up the light from the bear and it'll alarm so we hear it on the camera so I know exactly when this lights up and hopefully there's a voice at the same time it lights up so you know it's just 100% a ghost. So anyways we're going to go to the Graceland Cemetery, hopefully we get some stuff with this and we'll see you there. Let's go! We are at the Graceland Cemetery at night. The sky couldn't look any spookier. Are we gonna see a vampire? Yeah, dude. Who oh, no. <laughs> It was over here, because I know that grave was close to it. That, that one really old one. All right, let's take some still images. If there are any spirits here, can you please show up in our photos? What? I'm not kidding you. <laughs> wow. Like, as like soon as you thing. said that, a huge orb in between these two headstones. This orb appears at first to be moisture. However, look at the strange line through it. That wouldn't hypothetically appear on captured moisture or dust, would it? Although, Matthias does make a good point. Well, it's also like kind of on the colder side, so I'd say definitely there's a little moisture. Yeah. So I would take orbs with a grain of salt, for sure. Just then, Taylor captures an EMF spike. So I grab another meter that gives us exact EMF numbers. So like, oh, oh, look at that, look at that. Yeah. It like went a little bit of a oh. spike on an EMF. Point seven. Can you come and walk near this meter? Oh. To point three, point five. Whoa. Okay. Thank you. Can I make it go higher? Thank you. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> right? Oh we, my god. Wow. 
Do you have the dowsing rods? I do. And now it's zero. Is there a spirit here that would like to communicate with us? Please cross the rods to indicate there's a spirit. That was crazy, because like it's nothing now. And what do they go up to like 0.7 or something? Yeah. Sitting there. Yeah. Well, it seems like that energy left. Like it was yeah. there for a second, like then, super strong like when I a, asked. It was passing through. Yeah. When I asked, it got stronger and then it left. Yeah. That was still really cool though. We then turned on the spirit box. Oh, it's so quiet. Okay. Yo. What is it? Okay. Yo. What is it? Okay. Can you tell us what your name is? Martha? What I mistook for Martha was really the name Michael pronounced with a slight accent. Listen closely. Martha? I don't know. Here, you get a good angle. Here, you get a good angle. Can you please talk a little louder? Whoa. Can you please talk a little louder? Whoa. It's not going to be from movement. It's not going to be from, from anything else. It's just going to be authentic. Are you? That was a long one. Listen as Matthias tells us his plan to get very accurate EMF readings, and the same male voice responds, praising him for his planned accuracy. That was a long one. Are you? That was a long one. What's up with the vampire story? Oh. 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 We then capture a word you never want to hear out on a ghost hunt. Oh. Oh. Okay. I feel like we definitely got like a lot of stuff just in that quick like what two or three minute session was it? Yeah. Did the meter go off at all? No. No. After I put it down, it was just silent. I wonder what would happen if we put this like in the car, like attach it to the car speakers. <laughs> all right, we are going to start the spirit box. Should we roll the windows down? Sure. A mobile spirit box. Do any spirits want to talk with us? Open the van. Open the van? van? This voice will make sense in just a bit. Do any spirits want to talk with us? Open the van. Open the van? Open the van. Open the van? Wait, slow down, slow down. Okay, okay. What's your name? You are. You are. It's really hard to like pick out what's what on here. Live. Whoa, that was like a scream. Did you hear that? That was like a literal scream. Yeah. That gave me chills. Live. Whoa. Whoa. Where did we capture this woman's creepy cry? Whoa. Can you please tell us what your name is? Are there any spirits that would like to speak with us? 600? 600? 600? That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's great. Right. Oh yeah. We then capture one of the clearest spirit box voices we have ever gotten. Oh, building. The building? Oh, the building! The building, dude! Go up higher. 
building. Building. What's in the building? All right, here's the building right there. Can you prove to us that you're here? Can you prove to us that you're here? It's the same male voice. This male sounding entity is by all means the most powerful of them all in this cemetery. Could this somehow be what people think is the vampire? Or is this just a powerful human spirit? What's your name? Anne. Anne! <laughs> that is clear as day. I think this died, Matthew. Okay. Anne captures her own name on the necrophonic just as Taylor's camera unexpectedly dies. Were the spirits draining the full spectrum video camera to communicate through the spirit box and the necrophonic? Anne! Anne! So, what do you guys think? That was interesting. That was yeah. Weird. I'm closing windows. The in the in the van or in your van or whatever. The van. Open in the, the van. van. That yeah. was loud. Yeah. Or that scream. Whoa. That yeah, the scream me. was freaky. It was creepy when it said my name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, As it was a skeptic, interesting. What do you think? I definitely think it can be explained. Even the like scream. Yeah. I I, I definitely I still still strong in my skepticism. Mine's not changed. <laughs> I don't know, man. All right, back to the Walker house. So we returned to the Walker house and spent the night. Nothing paranormal occurred. Our hours of footage of the motion sensing bear revealed no activity either. So after hours and hours on the road, we captured some pretty awesome stuff. At Blood Cemetery, located just outside Stevens Point, nothing major happened. All the noises I had captured could be explained. That sounded like footsteps. Even though we began the journey at Blood Cemetery, we have to label it as not haunted. We did, however, have some strange activity at our second location, Boy Scout Lane. Matthias and Taylor captured a few weird moments. We just started recording and it's like, it's been spiking up a little bit. Yeah, it's, oh, it just stopped. This location is possibly haunted. Plover's Cottage Cafe is no doubt home to many, many spirits. The basement did not let us down. Taylor, what? Oh, I just saw something over there. What are you seeing, Taylor? It's like a, mm -hmm. like a, Quick little, like something mm -hmm. zipped across. What? I don't know. Are you freaking out? Yeah. I feel like I can see something over there. Turn light. Get a light. The spirit in the mirror was active, and her name was mentioned multiple times. <laughs> Even by an unknowing psychic. Agnes? Um, no. Oh my God. This location is haunted. Across Wisconsin, Elk Mound Tower was a fantastic place to visit. It was absolutely gorgeous in the fall, complete with a spectacular view. That's cool. Not to mention, it was chock full of spooky stories. We captured many spirit box voices, among plenty of other evidence, making this place for sure haunted. Mineral Point's Walker House was a cool place to spend the night. However, it did not give us what we were looking for ghosts. Yes, we captured that energy in the hall. Oh, I even felt it. It's pulling really hard. Oh, I just felt <laughs> like a, Did you feel like that? a wave through my fingers. Yeah. We believe it was some kind of energy just passing through as we didn't get anything the rest of our time there. So we consider this location not haunted. And finally, a location that really surprised us. Yes, we thought the story of the vampire was kind of dumb and that we wouldn't get anything. Oh, how wrong we were though. Graceland Cemetery, just a short drive from the Walker House, has one of the most active spirits we have ever made contact with. We consistently captured this male's voice throughout the night. 
and had some very cool reactions with our equipment. I could go higher. Thank you. Wow. Oh my God. Graceland Cemetery is for sure haunted. Our job as ghost hunters is not, oh, you gotta make every place look like it's haunted, <laughs> you know? If there are spirits, great, but we're not, we're not gonna make shit up and like say every place has a ghost. It's not the case. We, we ran into several locations where nothing happened to us and it's our job to let people know which places have spirits and which places have completely made up legends about them. On that being said, while we ran into some places that had nothing, we got some pretty good evidence at certain locations. If there's anything our trips to all these interesting locations prove, it's why our home state is so busy with paranormal enthusiasts trying to find some Wisconsin haunts.